Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, today we are going to uh, cover a, a situation where we want to study the effect of one group variable over an interval uh, level variable. So here our group variable is going to be hospital and our dependent variable is going to be satisfaction with life. <coughs> In other terms, we're going to uh, try to see if um, individuals have different mean satisfaction with life depending on the uh, hospital that they're in. So here we, here we have three hospitals, hospital one, hospital two, hospital three, one, two, three here. And here we have uh, levels of satisfaction with life using the satisfaction with life scheme. All right, so the first thing we want to do is click on analyze, compare means, one way ANOVA to get at least the basic output. Let me reset that. So our dependent variable is actually satisfaction with life, the first one, and uh, the factor, which is the independent variable, is going to be hospital. Let's click on uh, here uh, on the arrow to get hospital in this uh, box here. Uh, the other thing we want to do is here, we will just know if there are overall mean differences, but we will not know if they are between hospital 1 and hospital 2, or hospital 2 and hospital 3, hospital 1 and hospital 3. Right, so we want to know where these differences are, if there are any. So in other terms, we uh, want to click on the postdoc menu and select a type of postdoc test, and typically we would choose Turkey's HSD. So here we need to check Turkey. Let's click on continue. The other thing we want to know is if the assumptions of one-way ANOVA are violated or not. And through this menu, the only thing that we can do is actually know if uh, the assumption of homogeneity of variance uh, is violated or not, and it will be tested through a Levine's test. The other thing we can uh, use is a means plot to sort of see what's happening right in this data set more descriptively. Let's click on continue now and OK. So let's see what we have. Let me just scroll down first. So right, it seems from this means plot that basically hospital 3 uh, has higher satisfaction with life than hospital 2 and then hospital 1. But let's see if all of these differences are significant. So here we see that the 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 hospital you're in has a significant effect on, on uh, satisfaction with life, right? And we see that through the p-value that is over there, 0.036. So overall, we have an effect of the group, right? We have an effect of the hospital. However, we don't know uh, between um, which hospitals we have a significant difference. To know about that, we need to scroll down and have a look at the post-hoc tests. Right, so here we have the mean differences, and here we have their p-values right, through uh, Turkey's HSD. And so what we see here is that the only mean difference that is significant is between hospital 1 and hospital 3 over here. And we also see it here between 3 and 1. Obviously, it's the same. So it means that here only this hospital and this hospital have significant mean differences, but we cannot really conclude that hospital 2 is, is significantly different in satisfaction with life with, uh, from hospital 3 nor from hospital 1. Right, so where else can we where else can we go from that output? The only the other thing that we have is actually a Levine's test, which tests the null hypothesis that the three variances, so the variance of uh, satisfaction with life in each group, uh, is the same. Um, so it tests this null hypothesis, and it here. Uh, this p-value tells us that we cannot reject this null hypothesis, which is good, right? It means that the variances are not significantly different. So it means that the assumption of homogeneity of variance is not significantly violated, so we can still assume it. Um, however, we haven't checked another assumption, which we will check a little later. I just uh, want to point something out. Here, we have tested the overall model, which turns out, by the way, to be also the effect of the only uh, predictor that we had, which was hospital. However, we don't know if that effect is uh, weak, moderate, strong, etc. So we don't have any, any estimate of FX size for hospital from there. And also, we don't have a general uh, indicator of model fit. In other terms, we don't have R square for model fit, and we don't have partial data square for FX size. So where do we get that? Let's click on Analyze general linear model, univariate. Let me reset that. So here, our dividend variable is still satisfaction with life, and our fixed factor, uh, our group variable, our group predictor, is hospital. Right, and the other thing we want to check here is, let's click on options, we want to make sure we output the estimate of FX size, 
which will of course be um, partial data squared. Right, let's click on continue and OK. And so here we basically have the same F test because it's actually the same model as as earlier. So we have the same F test with the same p value here of 0.036 for the entire model. It turns out, of course, because we only have one predictor in this context, that it's also the F test for the effect of hospital. But now we also have a new information, new piece of information, that is the R square, which is here at the bottom of the table. Right? So it basically tells us that with hospital, with our only predictor, so also with the model in general, we explained 7.8% of the variance of satisfaction with life. And also, we have an estimate here of fx size through partial data squared. Uh, you'd have noted, and it's only the case in, uh, in one way ANOVA, that of course, in this case, because there is only one predictor, partial eta squared is perfectly equal to R squared. So, in other terms, we have redundant information there, but that's only in that context when we have more complex models, we will have an fx size for each of the, of the terms of the model, right? Each of the predictors. Okay, so that's not bad. We were able to explain 7% of, of the variance. Uh, what else do we need to do? So we said that we tested one of the main assumptions, which is homogeneity of variance, but we did not test for uh, conditional normality. In other terms, here, normality within each group. So we should actually perform three normality tests, one for each group. Let's click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. Let me reset. Okay, so our dependent uh, variable is satisfaction with life, and we are going to study the distribution of satisfaction with life through Explore, but we want to study it in each hospital. So we need to select hospital and put it here in the factor list. Next thing we want to do, let's, let's check that we have the descriptive statistics here, uh, descriptive statistics in uh, each group. Um, so it should be checked, and in plots, we will select the normality plots with test. Let me uncheck stem and leaf. All right, and we can, by the way, also output the histogram to have a more descriptive uh, overview of what's happening there. Right, let's click on continue and OK. Okay, so what we see, right, descriptively, here the skewness kurtosis in hospital one seems OK. However, for hospital two, well, we have a bit of a problem here in hospital three, uh, is a little bit better, but we probably have a problem there for hospital two in terms of normality. And that's also what we see in uh, the kolmogorov smirnov test. And here we see that only we can only um, retain the null hypothesis that we have a normality for this group. Right, the assumption is not significantly violated. However, for these two groups, hospital two and hospital three, we have a significant violation. Of, of conditional normality there. In other terms, distribution of satisfaction with life in hospital 2 is significantly not normal in hospital 3 as well. So here, typically, that's, a, that's a, maybe a good idea to uh, maybe add to your ANOVA some other, some additional procedures, maybe comparisons of medians, uh, maybe uh, bootstrapping. Um, right, so we have checked all the assumptions, and the, some of them were violated, actually. Uh, another thing that uh, we want to do here is output uh, something a bit different here than this uh, means plot. It's actually, it turns out to actually not be the kind of plot that is typically uh, shown. Most of the time, what we use in this context is a bar uh, chart with confidence intervals. So let's do that. Let's click on Graphs, Chart Builder. OK. Right. So here, I want to, let me reset. Um, here, I want to use a bar chart. Right? So here on bar, you should have this bar chart. Let's double click. OK, so this should show up. If it doesn't show up, by the way, uh, by the way, also it may show up on the right or on the left, depending on your layout. But if you uh, select on element properties here, um, it will show on and off. Right. Um, so what I want here as the x-axis is the hospital, and what I want on the y-axis actually are dependent variable satisfaction with life. And it's going to here plot the mean satisfaction with life. By the way, this is completely random, so you may not have the same bars. Um, right. So here in the element properties, uh, we here show the mean. We could select other things, like maybe the median. That can be a good idea. The mean we selected here by default. That's what is mostly shown. And let's 
add to that the error bars, which here would be the confidence intervals at 95%, which is the default. Let's select Apply, and then OK. And so here we have a means plot, right? And by the way, you see that it's a, it's a bit of a different output. It doesn't really look the same as what we had earlier in the ANOVA menu. Here it seems like we have giant differences between the three hospitals, but here, well, it puts things in a different perspective because here it's scaled from zero to about uh, maybe uh, 33, right? Uh, but here it gives an overview of the different scores that we can have, and so it's a, it's a, maybe a more accurate uh, view here. And so essentially, what we see is that here, Hospital One is significantly different from Hospital Three, even though we actually don't see it from the from the errors bar here, right? So there's not, it's not always 100% consistent what you see with confidence intervals and what you uh, see from from the from the ANOVA or the postdoc tests, right? But here it's a it's a it's a better way of, of really seeing what what happens here, and typically here we have big error bars, and if we wanted to to sort of reduce that to understand things a little bit better, maybe we would need a, a bigger sample. Okay, uh, thank you for for watching this video.